Uh, welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math. Today we are going to take a look at uh, the unit circle. Uh, the unit circle comes into play in trigonometry. It's going to be really useful uh, for all students of pre-calculus, calculus, and beyond to uh, memorize this unit circle, uh, understand the values associated with it, and uh, what exactly it means. So uh, in the last video we took a look at uh, arc length and um, wanted to measure a circle which is 360 degrees in terms of radians, which is a different unit. Um, and we did so, we found out that a full circle was uh, two pi radians. So what I've done here is broken up the uh, unit circle into the important uh, angles that are measured and uh, we're gonna find the values of each of these, of the uh, trig functions at those angles. So uh, we have the zero degree angle, um, the point that that's gonna correspond to, it's a unit circle of radius one uh, we're not going to quite just intuitively put that as one zero, uh, but you could essentially start and do that. Um, then 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians. 45 degrees is pi over 4 radians. 60 degrees is pi over 3 radians. Uh, in order to find this, all you need to do is multiply the degrees by pi over 80. So, for example, 60 degrees... times pi over 180 is simply pi over 3. So we can go around the whole entire circle and uh, measure out the angles. Uh, we want to pay attention to um, what they look like. Notice in the first quadrant all the uh, numerators are 1. In the second quadrant all the numerators are 1 less than the denominator. Um, in the third quadrant all the numerators are one more than the denominator, and in the fourth quadrant, uh, all the numerators are one less than twice the denominator. Um, so that's just a good way to remember the uh, values. And then we're also gonna notice that this point and this point are gonna be essentially the same up to their sign. So let's go ahead and find the uh, points that these uh, angles correspond to on the uh, outer edge of the circle here. So first we'll start with 45 degrees. Uh, to make things simple, I have a triangle with side lengths 1 and uh, it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Uh, so we know that the hypotenuse is 2 uh, rad 2, which is 1 squared plus 1 squared square root of that, uh, square root of 2. And cosine of 45 degrees, sine of 45 degrees. Uh, you can tell not all triangles, in fact most triangles don't have this fact but sine and cosine are going to be the same because those angles are the same. And uh, they're both 1 over square root of 2, adjacent over hypotenuse or opposite over hypotenuse, depending on how you're looking at the triangle. 1 over square root of 2 is also equal to uh, square root of 2 over 2. So uh, those two values actually correspond to uh, the point here at the outer edge of this circle. Now we could also take a look at if we wanted to, uh, it's just going to end up giving us the same sine and cosine values, but we could take a look at the triangle as if it looked like this. We drop an altitude straight down from the uh, circle to the axis and that's a 45, 45, 90 triangle with this radius, which is the radius of the circle. It's a unit circle. That's 1. So you can find uh, both the sides to be 1 over square root of 2 or square root of 2 comma square root of 2. So now we're going to take a look at some of the other angles. Um, this time we have a triangle, an equilateral triangle, all sides length 2, and we're going to drop an altitude from the top so we know that all the angles of the triangle are normally 60 degrees. We drop an altitude from the top straight down, so this is perpendicular. We know that that's going to cut that angle in half. So we have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, and uh, we can find the points that correspond to the 30 degree and the 60 degree angle, and then we can see how um, those relate to the rest of the circle. So we're going to have theta equals 60 degrees first. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, uh, we know that the uh, 
the altitude that cuts that angle up there in half is also going to bisect that segment. So uh, we have cosine of 60 degrees is just one half. Now we could use these two values, one and two. Uh, we have two squared is four minus one squared is four minus one, which is three, and then square root of three. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared for this right triangle. So sine of 60 degrees opposite over hypotenuse is just rad three over two. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put these points into our circle. And last, we're going to look at uh, cosine of 30 and sine of 30. Cosine of 30 is going to be uh, rad 3 over 2 adjacent over hypotenuse. And sine of 30 opposite over hypotenuse, 1 half. So we can again put these points into our unit circle. And we'll take a look. Um, we'll pretend that this is a triangle. So instead of just saying, okay, we know that this is a unit circle and this is the point on the x-axis, so it must be 1 comma 0 because it needs to be uh, one unit from the origin. Or we can take a look at this triangle that's not actually a triangle because it has two 90 degree angles and a zero degree angle. Uh, but we can still uh, use the same convention, so Katoa, to find the, uh, the trig functions. So cosine of zero is going to be one over zero adjacent over hy uh, hypotenuse, which is one. Sine of zero is obviously zero because zero over one is zero. And then we can take this 90 degree angle and we can say that uh, the uh, cosine of the 90 degree angle adjacent over hypotenuse is zero. And sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which is one. So we can go ahead and put that, those points in. Now, every point around the circle is going to be same as the corresponding point. So, for example, uh, 2 pi over 3 is going to have the same value, the same point as pi over 3 up to sine, because we're now working in quadrant 2, where x takes on a negative value. So that point over there is going to be negative 1 half comma rad 3 over 2. Now we could go ahead and go around the entire unit circle and label those points. So pi over 4 corresponds to 3 pi over 4. And uh, if you keep going with the 45 degree angles from the axis, you're going to have, uh, it also corresponds to 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Uh, in this case, both the coordinates are negative. In this case, the y coordinate is negative. Um, you can go around the entire unit circle and label it like that. And it's going to be really important to memorize those points. Uh, so you can just quickly uh, do calculations. So if someone asks for the sine of 30 degrees, you immediately know the answer. Um, or you could ask for sine of pi over 6. You immediately know the answer is a half. Cosine, rad 3 over 2. So it's going to be really important to memorize these points. It's going to be a lot of shortcuts in higher level math that you can use. Uh, these points and they correspond to shortcuts and uh, that's pretty much it for the unit circle.